Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of my Grand Exchange Only account. In this series, the goal is very simple. I want to get 1,000 total level without ever leaving the Grand Exchange area. The rules are very simple. No trading other players, no picking up other players' drops off the ground, and of course, to never leave the Grand Exchange. This will force me to experiment with really interesting money making methods and training methods. It's going to require me to constantly be balancing the cost of training methods versus the speed and will definitely push my ingenuity to the limit. As always guys, if you do enjoy the series, I would really appreciate it if you left a video like. It really does help my video get recommended to other people who maybe haven't uh, seen my channel before. Anyway guys, let's get started. All right, so as always, let's have a quick look at the stats uh, that we finished off with last time. Uh, so right now we're at total level 761, uh, which is pretty good. At this point now, we've probably invested at least five or 10 hours into each skill, which pretty much means going forward, everything is going to be rather slow or expensive. Uh, so going forward, we're definitely gonna have to pick and choose what is gonna be the most efficient use of my time. Uh, today, unfortunately, we probably have some of the more annoying skills to work on, like agility, fire making, wood cutting isn't that bad, prayer, stuff like that. Uh, so I guess there's no point talking about it, let's just go ahead and get started. <laughs> now there's one training method I haven't really experimented with yet, and that's kind of because there is the chance of losing a ton of money on it. Uh, but other times you can kind of break even, it really depends on the prices. Now that is enchanting crossbow bolts. Uh, so what I ended up doing is I went ahead and made 11,000 a diamond dragon bolt, which will have profited me probably 200, 300k. But this time, instead of selling them off right now, we're actually going to process them further. I do think enchanting these bolts will lose me money, but the entire process overall, i.e. attaching the bolts and enchanting them, this also kind of helps me circumvent the buying limit, which means instead of having a max of doing 11,000 per hour, I could do closer to 22,000. Now I'm pretty sure unless I'm missing something, enchanting bolts is going to be the best magic training method that I can do at the Grand Exchange. If you guys can think of any other quicker training methods, let me know. Uh, so it does 10 at a time, it's pretty AFK, and I'm really excited to see uh, what the experience rates are like. Now I'm kind of experimenting with a more click intensive version of this training method. It involves left clicking and hitting spacebar a lot. I don't think it's going to be really worth it, at least the way I'm doing it. Uh, regardless though, there's a magic level 74 magic. We don't get those very often anymore. I know enchanting bolts used to be really good on your phone. I'm not sure if that's still the case. I'm kind of thinking maybe not just because of the way uh, the new UI menu works. Yeah, I don't think that's worth it. Uh, we're getting about 140k per hour, uh, not clicking at all versus the constant clicking I was getting around 180k. So yeah, it is quicker, but definitely not worth it. Hey, there we go, another random event. The pirate captain, not the one I'm looking for exactly, but you know what, I'm doing every one just for fun. Man, I've probably done close to 15 random events now. Unfortunately, no dunce random, no genie, and most importantly, no Bob the Cat. Now, unfortunately, it looks like the diamond dragon bolts lost a bit of value. No problem though, I don't think we're gonna lose very much money on it. Okay, so one skill I definitely have to do a bit of training on today is, well, smithing and I guess kind of magic. Uh, we're going to buy a bunch of casts for the super heat spell and we're going to be superheating gold ore. We unlocked it in the last episode and I'm pretty sure gold ore is going to be my best training method for a while. The main benefits are that it's one gold ore per cast which means I don't have to bank so often and it's fairly cost effective compared to everything else. Okay there we go we sold off our diamond dragon bolts. I think we only lost actually 20,000 GP on that. Uh, so pretty good, pretty much break even at the current price. And for really AFK and quick magic training, I think that is definitely worth it. I don't even know why I enjoy superheating, but I kind of do. I think it's because you get two experience types at once. Kind of novel for me, but there we go. There's 45 smithing. We already gained five smithing levels. Still pretty quick. And as we get to higher levels, our smithing experience rate will go up, although it is going to get prohibitively expensive pretty soon here. Okay, we actually have another magic level coming in here. We've done a lot of magic training in the last uh, day or two. 
75 magic. We can now use a trident uh, on the imps, I guess. I don't know. Probably won't actually need to ever use that, but 75 magic is an awesome milestone. And we still have around 1800 uh, gold ore to go. There it is, guys. We finally got it. A genie random event. Now, I've been thinking about what skill I want to put this in for a while, because once I put it into a skill, I'm pretty much committed. Uh, it's way more efficient for me to just grind out a single uh, skill with the lamp. Because as you get levels, you're going to get more XP from the lamps. You're going to get quicker levels. And if we get lucky, we can probably get... I don't know, 5 to 10 levels just from Genie Lamps. Uh, so we're going to put it into Hunter. The other viable option was maybe Farming, although I might have a future plan for that if we break 1,000 total level. At least with Hunter, there is a chance maybe a random baby imp will come through. I don't know. Alright, we've been working on this level for a long time now, but that is going to be level 88 Fletching. By far our highest level skill now. We're probably going to get it to level 90 pretty soon. And eventually, I'm sure 99. Alright, so this time we're going to experiment with a slightly different method, and that is going to be enchanting Ruby Dragon Bolts. Uh, I think right now it's actually going to be very profitable for me to do it. And again, pretty good experience per hour. We have another magic level coming in. We've just been doing a ton of magic training, apparently. That is going to be level 76 magic. Pretty awesome. We just got it enchanting more Ruby Dragon Bolts. So there we go, we sold off a lot of Ruby Dragon Bolts for 130k in profit. Keep in mind though, that was the entire process, so we ended up losing a bit of money on the enchanting, but we made money when we actually combined the bolts, so overall a net profit. Okay, so I'm finally getting around to finishing up our superheating. Uh, we have another 500 or so left, but there is another magic level, 77 magic. And we're also actually almost at level 50 smithing. I think we're going to get that with the rest of the gold ore we have banked. Uh, so we should get that pretty soon. Okay, so we are done with nearly 3,000 superheats. And uh, it took me about 2 hours. And we also hit a really great milestone, level 50 smithing. We can now superheat mithril bars if we want to. I doubt I'm going to want to though, just because it's a way more click intensive, way more expensive, and not that much quicker. So 3,000 superheats of gold ore got us from level 40 to level 50 and cost me about 700k. Pretty expensive, but you know what? It had to be done. We gained 10 total levels for that, uh, which is really a lot at this point. Uh, we also lost 150k on the Ruby Dragon Bolt. So overall today we lost uh, kind of close to a mil. But in the end though, we definitely have to spend money and I think this is a worthy investment. Can everyone hear that? It's pretty subtle, but uh, that's the sound of me flushing money down the toilet. Uh, we're buying another 3,000 big bones. Even big bones being the most cost-effective possible thing I could bury in the ground is still around 8 GP to XP. I'm pretty sure without Gilded Altars, Prayer is one of the most expensive skills in the game, and there's no way around it. This is literally the cheapest bone I can bury, cheaper than regular bones. That said, this is going to be about a 600k investment, and I expect we'll probably get at least 5 to 6 prayer levels, so I think it's definitely going to be worth it. We made it through a good chunk of these bones, and that brought us all the way to 45 prayer. We're already up 4 prayer levels, I think. We have unlocked all of the protection prayers and mystic might. I don't really think those are really going to come in handy, because there's not much that can kill me here. But you know what, that's more total levels, and you know, the prayers could come in handy. Okay, so that actually brought me all the way to 48 prayer. I think that's going to be my last uh, level. From a 600k investment, we got, I think, 7 total levels, so actually pretty good. I really can't imagine burying anything more expensive than this. Maybe, maybe I could do baby dragon bones. That would be about double the GP to XP. Okay, so we finished off all the bones, and there we go. Money's gone. But you know what? Money's temporary. Skills are forever. Now next up here, I want to do a little bit more uh, herb lore money making and that is going to involve, uh, once again, unfinished potions. Pretty much the only consistent way to make money with herb lore. Side note here, we actually made about 200k in profit on those bolts. Not bad, but continuing on. Right now, creating lantidine potions has a margin of around 150 to 200 GP, which is really good. We went ahead and bought around 4,000 lantidine so far. I'm shooting to maybe do 9,000. Gonna take a while though. Well, I managed to make it through around 5,500 uh, Lentidine potions, but that's probably all I'm going to do. 
Let's just go ahead and price check this again. Right now, Lentidam potions are selling for $14.50 pretty well. Uh, so that is actually going to be a pretty solid profit of maybe a mil from doing around 5000 We have been doing a lot of woodcutting here and we're actually up to 47 woodcutting. Uh, quite a few total levels we just gained there. Now while I was doing that, I was working on something actually in the Grand Exchange. I'm kind of excited to show you. Now I don't really like High Alkene, but I decided I wanted to give it another shot. Now what we did this time was we bought a diverse amount of items, all which are quite profitable. Instead of just breaking even or making a bit of money, most of these items, at least at the price point we bought them at, uh, will profit me around 500 GP per cast. Now essentially how I found this is I just found items that were near-ish their high alk price and then just bumped it down by about a thousand GP or so and we bought actually quite a lot. We pretty much actually have around 300 uh, individual items which if we get an average of around 500 GP in profit per cast is around 150k in profit for very little work. Now this works well although it does require you to put a little thought in, figure out some items because most of these have a pretty low buy-in limit as we can't spam out the same item indefinitely. So moving forward, that is going to be my plan for high alkene instead of doing like 3000 green Diad bodies or something, which unfortunately got boring very quickly. We'll just pick away at it here and there, make a bit of money, and get some experience. Come on Santa, what are we getting for Christmas this year? <sighs> Christmas is dead. Actually, I'm not even that upset with that. That's a rare untradeable item that I can't get anywhere else. Okay, so we finished up all of our alks, and that took maybe 10 minutes tops. 150k in profit, I will take that. Oh my god, I actually can't believe it, what the hell? We actually got the step. Bow to Brungson Burson in the Grand Exchange. That is the only step we can do on any clue scroll, I think. And we got it. Uh, now, there is a chance of us getting the casket right away. That's actually so lucky, I've only done like 10. Now the problem is, with beginner clue scrolls, you don't have a very good chance of getting a one-step beginner, but it's not that uncommon, I think it's one of the eight. Uh, so, come on Uri, please just give me the casket. <sighs> okay, well, uh, back to back clue, maybe? Maybe we can get the grand exchange again, that would have to be ridiculously lucky. Oh, that was it guys, that was our chance of finishing the beginner. That may never happen again. Now something I noticed just recently is that the Dragonstone Dragon Bolts actually look like they are really profitable to make right now. This is also one of the higher level bolts which means we're going to get even more experience per hour doing this, more than Diamond and Ruby. Okay so I just went ahead and price checked everything and right now we are looking at over a hundred GP profit per bolt which is amazing. We're definitely going to go ahead and try to instantly buy these items because that is going to be a mill in profit from only around 15 or 20 minutes work, 3 to 4 mil an hour, I will definitely take that. The only slight issue could be that I don't really know who buys these items, I'm not sure what the volume is on it, but I think it's worth giving a shot. Okay, I went ahead and whipped through those Dragonstone bolts because I want to get them for sale as soon as possible. I went and checked the GE volume for Dragonstone Dragon Bolts. About 50,000 to 60,000 sold a day, so definitely not a ton, but we should be able to make the sale assuming that we are patient and nobody undercuts me. Right now though, we are primed to make about a mil in profit, which is huge for something that literally took me uh, about 15 minutes. Now I'm just kind of trying to get through some items in the bank I already had. We had around 1,000 or 1,500 red topaz bracelets, so we went ahead and enchanted those. Right now I think we're actually getting around a two to 300 GP profit per bracelet of slaughter that we enchant. Uh, so while they are very slow to sell, they're profitable and AFK and actually I think we're getting probably closer to 500 GP profit per bracelet so that's awesome. And look at that guys, we managed to make the sale at 1226 which means we made 1 mil and 20k in profit on that. Probably our best GP per hour item I've ever done. I'm definitely going to try to repeat that as soon as possible because not only was that absolutely insane money per hour. We're also getting really, really good fletching experience. Assuming I was paying attention, I could get up to 230k per hour fletching experience on top of that. 
Now, as we kind of hit the buying limit for a few different items I wanted to do, I kind of decided we need to start focusing a bit more on fire making. Now, for the last couple of weeks, my technique for fire making has involved just making a giant line. Now, that is reasonably okay, but you definitely lose out on a pretty significant amount of XP per hour. Now, the method I'm doing now is definitely more click intensive, as you can probably see, but it does produce much higher experience rates. For example, maple logs, I'm getting about 20% more experience. Essentially, it involves moving every time you make a fire, as there's quite a bit of leeway in how far you can move. I have four separate rows, I go all the way to the end of one, and then all the way back. Repeat that twice, and then just get more items out of the bank. Alright, there's another fire making level, 67 fire making. Uh, with this method, I am getting closer to uh, 200k per hour with maple logs, which is a significant improvement. Okay, we're just taking a quick break from fire making, we're skill hopping a little bit here, but there is 32 attack. Now I'm shooting to get 40 attack first, um, because for one we can get the rune scimitar, but also I could now wield a battle staff, which will save me money while using uh, certain spells. And actually we get a kind of bonus total level here, there's 34 hit points, kind of out of nowhere. Okay, so we actually took a break and we decided to make um, some more unfinished potions. This time we decided to do uh, Vanto potions and 3,000 of them. Okay, we sold them off for a 300k profit. It took me about an hour, a bit less, so I wouldn't say that's a very good use of time. But we made money, so in the end, who cares that much. Okay, after finishing all of these high alks, I think we just hit a really awesome milestone. Um, a cash milestone of, I think, 20 million GP. Even though we've already spent quite a bit today, we've also made just as much, and obviously more. Uh, so looking at our Grand Exchange offers here, we just profited another 913k on the Dragonstone Dragon Bolt. That's so good, it only took me 15 minutes. Uh, the Bracelets of Slaughter were much slower, but we still got around 800k in profit on those ones. So I think if we take out our offer for Red Dead Bodies, which the plan was to alk them, but look at that guys, we're up to a 20 mil cash stack. That is amazing, and that was one of our sub goals that we can now knock off the list. 20 million GP, that is awesome. We definitely want to keep that growing, because by the end of this, we're going to need to spend a lot of money. Oh my god, guys, the fashion scape, it's just unreal now. Oh, it's perfect. I love this outfit, actually. So I noticed that we're actually getting really close now to 800 total level. You can see that we're at 794. So we're going to go ahead and do it. I'm pumped up. We've already gotten one sub goal all the way. Let's just go ahead and get another one done with. That being 800 total level. Maybe if I go completely manic, I'll be able to get all of those total levels just from agility. Maybe though. That's seven whole total levels. That's kind of crazy. There is level 23 coming in. Hand pain level right now. 2 out of 10. Pretty manageable. That's going to be another level coming in. 24 agility. No unlock, but it doesn't matter for me anyway. Well, I ended up doing about an hour of agility training, and that got me to 25 agility. Seems like a good spot to stop to me. A nice even milestone, and I'm not sure how much more my brain or my hands can take this, so we're going to stop at 25 for now. So that leaves us with only three total levels to go till we hit that big 800 milestone. And to speed things up a bit, I'm going to do U-logs. Now, I've been fighting against doing this for a while now, but honestly, in this particular challenge, Fire making is just one of the more annoying skills to do, so if I can speed it up by spending a bit of money, maybe that's not such a bad thing. Sure, it's not really useful at all, but actually quite a few of these skills aren't particularly useful. For example, crafting. Well, that's going to be it, guys. There is level 70 fire making, a perfect way to end off the episode. Another clean level, and cleanest of all, of course, 800 total. Uh, something I actually didn't think I would get this quickly. Sure, things are going to slow down even more now, but look at this, guys. We've got the epic fashion scape going on. we got 800 total level, 20 mil in the bank. Things are looking good. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. As always, guys, if you have any suggestions for the series, leave them down below. I do read every comment and appreciate everyone. Now, before I go here, I want to give a massive thank you to one of my newest subscribers, James Luft, who just subscribed at the Dragon tier of YouTube membership, joining Brad Sings, Tizdok Bunny, Revolver Ocelot, and Kush Patel, all at the Dragon tier. That's amazing, guys. Thank you so much. 
And also a huge shout out to Luke Kaiser, Bass Titch, Heathen, OSRS, and Double Talk for your continued support. If you guys are looking for an additional way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. You can become immortalized in some of my videos, get access to my video release schedule, as well as get a custom role in my Discord channel. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you next time.